Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Now, recently I've seen a huge amount of comments on our RTX 2060, GTX 1660 Ti and 1660 coverage celebrating how fast Vega 56 has become. Quite a few viewers have claimed that Vega 56 is now caught up to the GTX 1080 and I suppose that's been brought on because we have seen quite a few impressive results recently. New titles such as Forza Horizon 4, uh, Dirt Rally 2.0 and Resident Evil 2 for example. And that's pretty impressive. It also certainly seems like progress given back when I first reviewed Vega 56 in late 2017. Out of the 25 games tested, it beat the GTX 1080 in just a single title, Dirt 4 using CMAA. This meant on average it was 14% slower than the GTX 1080 at 1440p. Certainly not a bad result at the time, but I wonder, in 2019, has that margin shrunk? Since so many of you have asked me to look closely at the GTX 1080 and Vega 56 comparison, I thought we might as well do that. However, when I make these sorts of videos, I always run into the issue of not being able to please everyone. If I only compared Vega 56 with the GTX 1080, I'd get, Vega 56 was never meant to compete with the GTX 1080. Unfair comparison, you shill unsubbed. Then if I only compared Vega 56 with the GTX 1070, I'd get, the GTX 1070 Ti was released for a reason. Unfair comparison, you shill unsubbed. I guess I could just compare Vega 56 to the GTX 1070 Ti, but that's not really the comparison many of you have been requesting. So to cover all my bases, I'm going to see how Vega 56 stacks up against the GTX 1070, 1070 Ti and 1080 in 37 games at 1080p and 1440p. You happy? Good, let's get on with it. For this one, we'll be looking closely at performance at 1440p in about a dozen titles, and then we'll jump to a 37 game breakdown comparing Vega 56 head to head with the GTX 1070 and 1080. The graphs also include 1080p data, but I'll skip over discussing that purely to save time. Finally, the test system used includes a Core i9 9900K clocked at 5GHz with 32GB of DDR4-3200 memory. Okay, let's get into the results. Performance in Shadow of the Tomb Raider hasn't changed since our original testing, but that's good news for AMD as Vega 56 is just a few frames slower than the GTX 1080 and well ahead of the GTX 1070. It's certainly not a win over the 1080, but it's almost close enough to call a tie, at least at 1440p anyway. Moving on, AMD hit the ground running in Forza Horizon 4, and it's been a solid title for them ever since release. As you can see, Vega 56 beats the GTX 1080 at both tested resolutions, and was 5% faster at 1440p. Not a massive win, but then any win over the GTX 1080 really can be considered a massive win for Vega 56. Generation Zero is a newly released title, and a few Patreon members requested that I add it to our battery of game benchmarks. So here it is. AMD look as though they're yet to do much optimization work in this one as Vega 56 does fall behind even the GTX 1070. So that is a bit of a shame. Ah yes, Anthem. I'm finally testing with it for the first time. I actually bought this game with our Patreon money before release. Apologies to all our amazing Patreon members for effectively wasting that money. Anyway, because the game tanked, I never actually installed it. That is, until now. I'm not sure what to tell you really, I was just trying to get to a 40 game benchmark with this one. Vega 56 does quite well at 1440p, it edged ahead of the GTX 1070 Ti by a mere 4% margin to come in just 5% slower than the GTX 1080, so overall quite a good result. As was the case with Dirt 4, the Radeon GPUs completely dominate in Dirt 2. Here Vega 56 outpaced the GTX 1080 by a 7% margin, so that's obviously a great result for the red team, and I can see why people are starting to believe Vega is making a late charge with results like these. The GTX 1080 and Vega 56 are evenly matched in the Division 2. The GeForce GPU just managed to nudge your head by a few frames, though Vega 56 did just that when looking at the 1% low performance, so as I said, they are very evenly matched. Performance is also competitive in Far Cry New Dawn. The GTX 1080 was a few frames faster on average while both produced the same 73 FPS 1% low result. Needless to say, Vega 56 performed much more like a GTX 1080 in this title than did a GTX 1070 Ti, and it pretty well smoked the vanilla 1070. Moving on, we have Apex Legends, and here all four GPUs performed very well at 1440p. That said, Vega 56 edged out the GTX 1070 Ti, though this one is basically close enough to call a tie. The GTX 1080 was 11% faster, so a reasonably comfortable victory for Nvidia's more expensive GPU in this title. Ace Combat 7 Skies Unknown is another Patreon requested game, so 
naturally I've added it. That said, it's not a particularly great title for AMD, and we're starting to see a bit of a trend here with these lesser known games. Seems AMD just doesn't have the budget to optimize for everything. Moreover, a lot of these games are likely developed using NVIDIA hardware. Anyway, Vega 56 was slower than even the GTX 1070 in this one, making it 26% slower than the GTX 1080. Next up, we have Rainbow Six Siege, and here Vega 56 just edged out the GTX 1080 at 1440p, despite winning rather comfortably at 1080p. Anyway, this is at the very least a tie, and that's an exceptional result for the Radeon GPU. It also meant that Vega 56 was 19% faster than the GTX 1070 in this title. The Strange Brigade results are quite interesting. Here Vega 56 managed to match the average frame rate of the GTX 1080 at 1440p, but was down quite a bit for the 1% low result, and we often see this with AMD GPUs in this title. Still, the 1% low figure wasn't horrible, and Vega 56 did manage to match the GTX 1070 Ti, so overall, another good result for AMD. Now, this is very interesting. Back when I did my 40-something GPU benchmark of Battlefield 5, Vega 56 was actually 11% slower than the GTX 1080 at 1440p. The game's now gone through several patches since then, and AMD has released a plethora of driver updates. I'm also testing a slightly different section of the game, but I'm certain that last point doesn't account for the difference we see here today. From 11% slower upon release, Vega 56 is now 5% faster than the GTX 1080, at least when comparing the average frame rate performance. The 1% low performance is a little weak, but even so, it still edged out the GTX 1070 Ti here. Overall, very impressive stuff from the red team in Battlefield 5. Metro Exodus is an NVIDIA-sponsored title, so not terribly surprising to see Vega 56 trailing the GTX 1080 by a 13% margin. Vega 56 finds itself slotted in between the GTX 1070 and 1070 Ti in this one, so not a bad result, but I feel with some optimization work we would be looking at a better result. These are the performance figures we got in late January when testing Resident Evil 2 for the first time, and the latest display drivers don't change anything here. So Vega 56 retains its win, beating the GTX 1080 by a 5% margin, though they were basically identical when comparing 1% low performance at 1440p. Still, this is an exceptionally good result for Vega 56. I think based on what we just saw there, it's pretty clear that Vega 56 hasn't actually caught the GTX 1080, at least not overall, but there certainly were a few impressive results. I suspect it's doing a little better than the 14% loss we saw in our day one coverage, so let's jump over to the 37 game breakdown and take a close look at the current situation. Okay, so this time out, Vega 56 was found to be just 9% slower than the GTX 1080 on average across the 37 games tested. Impressively, it enjoyed big wins in Rainbow Six Siege and Dirt 4, though neither are particularly new titles. While it was also faster in Dirt Rally 2, Forza Horizon 4, Resident Evil 2, and Battlefield 5. There were a few games where Vega 56 gets shafted, and they included Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Ace Combat 7, Project Cars 2, and World of Tanks. Still overall, a pretty positive 2019 test for Vega 56. It's also really interesting to note that while Vega 56 was just 2% faster than the GTX 1070 back in late 2017, it's now 9% faster and better still, it was slower by more than a 5% margin in just three of the 37 games tested, while it's faster by more than a 5% margin in 23 of the titles tested. So, in conclusion, yes, Vega 56 is certainly looking better today than it did upon release, so that is good news. The bad news being that none of these Pascal GPUs featured in this video are Vega 56's current competition. Today, Vega 56 is priced at best to compete with the RTX 2060, and at worst, the RTX 2070. Given the RTX 2060 is 7% faster on average, that paints Vega 56 into a rather tough spot. And as I said in my RTX 2060 coverage, unless you can get Vega 56 for $300 or less, I wouldn't bother. Hopefully AMD can make more of an impact with Navi soon. We can only hope. And that is gonna do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And if you appreciate the Werbridge Horror Box, then consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.